Next on our program is the Honorable Minister of Health of the Republic of Ghana. The Honorable Minister of Health is a cabinet minister. He's a chartered management accountant and is a member of parliament from Doma Central. The Honorable Kweku Ajima Menu was the chairman of the Public Accounts Committee in the immediate past parliament and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in economics and statistics, graduating from the University of Ghana in 1989. He was the acting CEO of the National Health Authority in 2006, and also the Deputy Minister of Finance and Economic Planning in the Eswile Kufo administration. Ladies and gentlemen, representing His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufuado is the Honorable Kweku Ajimai Menu, Minister of Health, Ghana. Professor Chair of um, Afri Health, my colleague, Honorable Minister for Education, is not present today, but I'm very much sure that he will be with you before you finish the symposium. Representative of WHO, Dr. Giorgio Conetto, the keynote speaker. Dr. Roger Glass, the Executive Secretary of the Consortium of Universities for Global Health, Dr. Keith Marf Martin, Director Centers for Disease Control Africa, Director General Ghana Health Service, Director Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons, Council and Executive Members of Afri Health, Directors and Heads of Institutions, Delegates from Sister African countries and abroad, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, and our friends from the media. Let me first apologize on behalf of the president who couldn't be here with us. He had an emergency call to Abuja and he flew out this morning and that is why he couldn't be here. I asked him on two occasions why he was so interested in Afri Health's invitation. He called me once, he sent a letter on green paper asking who should be here. And eventually he said he himself would deliver a speech. But unfortunately, he had to go away. He didn't ask me to speak on his behalf, so I got some freedom. <laughs> to maybe wave around the prepared speech that I have. But he extends his greetings and congratulates the organizers of the forum and AfriHealth especially, and what some of you entrepreneurs are doing for research in medicine for Ghana. I myself have been very close to research. I just want to say that the president puts a lot of premium on research. When I was a deputy minister for finance, there was an occasion we put into the budget how to match research findings onto the market, trying to commercialize what we are researching for. Unfortunately, Ghanaian business people didn't take advantage of that budget that we put in. That was the time Coco Research was doing marvelously well and showcasing their products out of research that they were doing. Fortunately for me, I have been very close to one of your entrepreneurs, Roger. Um, Professor Ama was my schoolmate, and even the university, we lived in the same hall of residence. And um, I think Peter knows which hall I'm talking about. <laughs> 
So there are some of us in government now who are so close to research. And this government, I can say with all assurance, that we are putting a lot of premium on research. Those of you who may have heard of the renowned cardiologist in Ghana, Professor from Pombwating, he is now the Minister for Science and Technology. And uh, many times we meet in cabinet, all his contributions are on research. So I believe Afri Health, your uh, budget challenges may be addressed as and when you begin to grow and grow faster for your own development and the development of our country. Government has said it's putting premium on research and we are putting premium again on training. And as part of the vision of our president, um, we're trying to sponsor specialist training for medical officers who want to advance their careers in different fields. Again, we are supporting nursing trainees and allowances that hitherto were supposed to be theirs but withdrawn is going to be introduced this academy session come September. There are several little, little things we are trying to do to support training and research into medicine. And as we move along, probably next symposium, we may be able to outline some of the things that we might have achieved. I must say I'm very happy to be able to address you this morning at this very first Symposium of Afri Health. I add my voice to the work messages by previous speakers and applaud the sense of common purpose that has brought you together to deliberate on ways of tackling the numerous health, educational, research concerns of our dear continent. I have noted that the theme and sub themes of the symposium seek to address issues of leadership and capacity building of the health professions in education, research, and practice. The sub-themes will also look at the health workforce in Africa, response to epidemics and disasters, and non-communicable diseases. These are most appropriate, especially for us in Africa, where resources are limited and systematic weaknesses sometimes contribute to the dissipation of our best efforts. We lack adequate health personnel with the requisite skills. And the few we have are concentrated in the cities and large teaching hospitals to the detriment of the majority of our population. As Minister for Health, I am heartened because you'll be addressing challenges with human resources, infectious diseases, injury, non-communicable diseases, education, training, and research. The medical and nursing education initiatives, MEPI and NEPI projects, which were launched in 2010 and 11, and funded with close to about $130 million from the PEPFA and the National Institutes of Health, were a unique res response to the African health workforce crisis. The implementation of these projects were led by African principal investigators who proved their metal. And I think Ruja has mentioned quite a number. We thank you so much. MEPI and EPI catalyzed major challenges within the individual participating schools. The innovations include the introduction of technology for teaching, expansion of internet connectivity and research capacity building. In order to improve HIV AIDS service delivery, schools revise curricula to incorporate new HIV AIDS guidelines, evidence-based treatments, care management, and diagnostics. Schools also improved pre-service training on HIV AIDS related topics for nurses, midwives, technicians, physician assistants, and other non-physicians, and provided in-service training for physicians on core infection management, prevention, and medication access and adherence. In Ghana, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology partnered the Ministry of Health 
University of Michigan, Ghana Ambulance Service, Confanochi Teaching Hospital, and the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons to train emergency medicine and emergency nursing specialists in the country. The products are available in all regions of our country now. The training programs have also benefited other West African nationals. We are grateful to the people and government of the US for the African initiative and commit to ensuring the sustainability of the gains made. I commend the leadership of the AfriHealth for the vision to build on the gains of MEPI and EPI, especially the determination to ensure that educational research and practice innovations are sustained and shared with more schools and all health professions across the continent. AfriHealth's success in breaking down the traditional barriers between health professionals will pave the way in transforming the health landscape on the African continent. For this, I promise the unflinching support of all African health ministers. How have we fared as African nations in our efforts to advance the health of our people? Have our investments in the health sector yielded the desired results? Why does malaria continue to cause so much morbidity and mortality? Why do so many of our women die during childbirth? How should our health systems be strengthened to ensure neonatal for all? Can the health sector assure our nationals of accessible and affordable quality care, how do we proceed to improve on our performance? Do managers of our health institutions have the requisite training and can they be held accountable? Are we ready to effectively manage epidemics and mass disasters? What about the increasing levels of non-communicable diseases such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, strokes, and cancers? Must we continually look outwards for solutions to these problems? Or must we lead and seek necessary partnerships? I am hopeful, ladies and gentlemen, that your deliberations during this symposium will provide some answers to these questions, and we look forward to hearing, learning from your insights. The epidemic of trauma and resultant injury is continuing to exert its unequal force on the African continent. The volume of acutely ill and injured is an ever-increasing issue, affecting mostly the youth and economically productive sector of our populations. Injury results in 5.8 million deaths worldwide every year. That is about 32% more than HIV, malaria. It disproportionately affects low middle income countries where three of the five leading causes of death include injury or trauma. Pre-hospital and in-hospital emergency services are poorly developed and compromise the outcome of interventions. Health services must be universally available, affordable, and delivered effectively and efficiently by qualified personnel in a timely manner. In the heart of this, there is the need for adequate numbers or appropriately trained personnel. We cannot depend on the charity of external missions to address our health needs. I'm aware of the role being played by middle level practitioners in some African countries for the delivery of surgical services. We need scientific evidence for the efficacy of such initiatives before adopting it throughout the continent. And I hope we can count on partners like AfriHealth to contribute to generating it. Our health systems face a number of challenges, including poor infrastructure, unintegrated information systems, and absence of comprehensive emergency services. Weak governance structures and inadequate financing of healthcare services all contribute to the poor state of health of our populations. 
strong and effective leadership and governance at all levels of the health system are required. Professor Che, the high levels of maternal mortality, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and non-communicable diseases in our various countries are reminders of the weaknesses of our health systems. These require multisectoral approaches, including finance, road and transport, education, and what have you. However, we as health professionals must provide leadership and address the problems that lie in the bosom of our sector. We cannot continue to blame others for our non-performance. I am happy that AfriHealth seeks to reach out to the more than 120 medical and nursing schools on the continent that did not benefit from MEPI and NEPI awards and share the gains. It is our responsibility as ministers of health to facilitate this and I promise my unflinching support again. I will also advocate for this support with my fellow African ministers. We need your leadership and partnership in tackling the numerous health challenges that we face in Africa. And I want to assure you that our next meeting may not be in Zimbabwe. Whenever I get a slot, I will see what I can talk about training and research to my fellow colleagues. I hope you'll avail my office a summary of your deliberations. I have already requested for soft copies of the presentation I've seen so far this morning. And as I leave you to join Parliament, I have a few questions to answer there. I will want to wish you fruitful and successful symposium. I thank you very much for your audience. <laughs>